You've heard of the dashing assassin. You've also heard of the toxic assassin and the stealthy assassin. You've even heard of just assassin. Well, now it's time to introduce the action assassin. Hello, fellow brawlers. I'm Kairos Time, and it is time for the Stu Olympics. And after that, we are going to be going over 19 balance changes happening this update. Sorry for the crazy long intro. Stu overview. I believe Stu is short for safety test unit or maybe he's just named for the first three letters of stunt. Either way, he used to be a crash test robot that has since become repurposed as a stunt driver extraordinaire with gasoline in his veins. Stu is the newest trophy road brawler that you'll get for free once you reach 10,000 trophies. But just because he's free for all of you guys does not mean I'm gonna get him for free. Every new brawler gets an unboxing challenge on my channel, even if they're a trophy road brawler. And Supercell just had to make a crash test brawler. Are you guys afraid for my safety? <laughs> Because I am. Hopefully I don't end up like Stu because he sounds like he's crashed more than just a few times. You guys are gonna have to subscribe and see what I do for my Stu unboxing video. I've already got something really big planned, so don't, you're not gonna wanna miss it out. And while you're doing that, turn the notification on so that you do not miss the sneak peeks happening for this update right here on my channel as soon as Supercell lets me drop them. By the way, here are what Stu's pins look like. You'll actually notice the chevron pattern going up or down depending on whether he's I don't know, feeling happy or sad. Stu's attack, Razzle Dazzle. For Stu's attack, he fires two shots in a straight line that deal a decent amount of damage. The range of his attack is also pretty solid, but what's really impressive is the fact that Stu only requires one projectile from his attack to fully charge his super. Stu's super, Nitro Boost. For Stu's super, he makes a short dash and leaves a trail of fire on the ground that will light enemies on fire if they touch it. You can manually aim this dash to move the direction that you want to, but if you auto-aim this ability, Stu will dash in the direction that he is moving and not necessarily toward the closest enemy. In other words, auto-aiming his dash acts kind of like Shelly's or Max's dash gadgets work and not like Mortis's attack or Daryl's super works. Also, this super cannot be used to travel over water like Daryl's or Bull's super. And if he does dash into a wall or over water, he'll just stop short very much like Mortis's dashing attack. Stu's gadget, Speed Zone. When Stu activates this ability, he drops a booster that gives himself and teammates within a very large radius a speed boost. Here's a comparison with and without the speed boost to show just how helpful it is. And in this side-by-side, -side, both brawlers hit the boost at the same time, but Leon is still clearly faster than Stu since Leon's base movement speed is faster. I should mention that the speed boost does not do anything if a brawler has another ability that makes it even faster. For example, you can tell in this side-by-side -side that Leon using his smoke trail star power to increase movement speed while invisible, does not end up getting an additional overall speed boost from Stu's gadget. I should also mention that this speed boost does not increase the movement speed of non-brawlers like Terra's Shadow. Stu's first star power, zero drag. When Stu has this star power equipped, his super dash distance is increased by 71%. This is a side-by-side -side of kind of what that looks like to give you an idea of how helpful this is. And this is a really simple star power that is very helpful because his normal super dash distance is really short. Stu's second star power, Gaso Heal. With this star power equipped, whenever Stu uses his super, he also heals 500 HP. Now, since Stu can use his super after every single hit with his attack, I think that this star power is mostly comparable to Barley's medical use star power, which heals 400 HP with every single attack. Stu's Gaso Heal star power heals for more, but it won't activate with every single attack unless he supers between every attack and he hits enemies with every single shot. Now that we know how Stu works, it is time for us to see how well he does in the Brawl Stars Olympics. We're going to start with his worst test, move our way up to his best test where he really thrives, and after that, we're going to cover the balance changes happening in this update. The area test. Stu is only able to clear 16 skulls with his main attack, and unfortunately for him, his super does not clear any skulls at all. This places Stu in last place for the area test, which suggests he's probably not gonna be very good as other brawlers at controlling the field. The swarm test. Stu requires one ammo to take out each bot, which means that he takes 30 seconds to clear the whole swarm. This puts him in 43rd place out of the 45 brawlers in the game, which suggests that Stu will struggle against multiple enemies. Enemies. Now, if you're wondering why I did not use his super, it's because Stu's super doesn't deal any damage unless an enemy walks over the fire from his trail. If Stu hits the bots with his super, it just pushes them out of the way of the fire so they don't actually take damage. 
Technically, I could have pinned some of the bots against the wall so that they were forced to take fire damage, but even then it would require two supers to deal enough damage to take out a single bot, which is why I didn't bother with it. So technically, Stu might have placed higher in this test, but I think this is a more realistic way to measure him in the swarm test. The super range test. Stu has one of the shortest supers in the game, and that's even with his zero drag star power that increases his super range. It reaches a total range of three and two thirds tiles, which is two third tiles longer than Mortis's dash. Stu takes 40th place in the super range test. The box test. This test is designed to see how well a brawler can ramp up in showdown. Stu requires four ammo to take out his first three boxes, which means that it takes him a bit longer to start ramping up than other brawlers. In total, it takes him one minute and eight seconds to take out all 16 boxes, which places him in 39th for this test. The boss test. Stu takes one minute, 23 seconds to completely take out the boss. This is because even with the boss pinned up against a wall so that he gets hit by the flames from Stu's super, the flames don't stack and also the damage is very small so Stu pretty much has to rely on his attack damage and reload speed to take out the boss. Stu takes 36 out of the 45 brawlers in this test which places him right between Leon and Frank for sustained damage. The Assassin Test. This test measures a brawler's maximum damage output in only 3 seconds. Stu can deal 7,280 damage which puts him right between Leon and Lou for this test. He takes 35th, but I do actually think he's going to be a better assassin than this would suggest because of how his dash mechanic works and the fact that he can unload three quick ammo faster than most brawlers can. The dive test. Stu is able to throw out three quick attacks before getting taken out by the Ike turret. He deals 5,040 damage, which places him in 31st place for this test. This suggests that Stu is not great at dealing damage in high pressure situations, so 1v1s are probably his best bet. The attack test. Stu's attacks deal 840 damage with two projectiles for a total damage of 1,680. This is enough to two-shot eight brawlers, including Crow, Barley, Brock, and several other brawlers with 3,360 health. This is also enough damage to three-shot 30 of the brawlers in the game, including Bo, Gale, and Ems. This places Stu in 30th for the attack test, along with Lou and Frank. The attack range test. Stu has an attack range of eight tiles, which places him in 29th out of all of the brawlers. For reference, this is the same range as Max and Terra. It's a little bit shorter than Gale's and Crow's ranges, and it's a little bit longer than M's and Poco's ranges. The survival test. Stu has 4,480 health at max level, which ties him with Terra and Max for standard health. However, using his Gaso Heal star power, Stu is able to heal himself every time he uses a super, which he's able to do multiple times before he would have to take the sniper bot out, which is not allowed for this test. He's able to survive for 17.9 seconds, which places him in 25th for the survival test. The super damage test. Although Stu's super does not directly deal damage, if an enemy gets hit by the fire, they'll catch fire and take 280 damage for four seconds. This comes to 1,120 total damage, which really is not much much. Honestly, the only reason why he places 24th for this test is because of all the brawlers that have supers that either heal or do something other than actually deal damage with their supers. We are now to the point where Stu is better than half of the brawlers in the following tests. Let's see if you've been paying attention and you already know which test Stu takes first in. The race test. Stu has a normal movement speed like the majority of the brawlers in the game. However, he's able to use his gadget twice, which gives him a slight advantage. He takes 10.6 seconds to complete this test, which puts him in 19th place. The reload test. Stu takes 17.7 seconds to unload and reload 10 shots, giving him a reload speed of 1.77 seconds. This places him in 17th place for this test and lands him between Rosa and Lou when it comes to how quickly he can reload his ammo. The push and pull test. Stu's second best test is the push and pull test, where he's able to knock targets back two tiles if he hits them with his super. This is the same knockback as Piper's super bombs, Surge's super, and the same range as Terra's super can actually pull a target. This places him in fourth for this test. And now we're down to Stu's best test, the supercharge test. It should come as no surprise that Stu takes first place in this test. Literally the very moment that he unloads his attack, his super is charged, which gives him the fastest supercharge rate out of all of the brawlers. In fact, it's actually 
totally possible for Stu to charge two supers with one ammo if he uses his super before the second projectile hits. Two supers for one ammo, that is crazy. And although it is highly unlikely to happen in battle, it just goes to show how cool his mechanic is. Before we talk about balance changes, I wanted to quickly talk about how strong I think Stu is going to be. I think it is clear that he's going to be insane in Brawl Ball. Maybe not even OP, but just like really fun to play, especially if you're good with him. Dashes with every ammo hit with a very long attack range, plus an easy to charge super that will knock the ball out of enemy hands on defense. Honestly, he might even end up being more fun to play in Brawl Ball than Mortis. I also think that he's going to be pretty okay in Solo Showdown because of his range paired with his ability to escape tough situations. He might be okay in Siege as a primary bolt gatherer, but he doesn't deal enough damage to the boss or the Ike turret to justify using him in my opinion. He also might be okay in Bounty, but I definitely think that there are better assassins for Bounty than Stu. And I don't actually think he's going to be very good in Gem Grab, Heist, or Hot Zone, where gaining control and pushing the enemy team back is really important. I think Stu is going to be a very high skill cap brawler, and he'll be a ton of fun to play, especially in the right modes, but only time is going to tell if he's actually going to be decent. And now it's time to talk about balance changes. B's Honey Code Star Power is being replaced with Honey Comb. This star power gives B a 20% damage reducing shield whenever her main attack shot is supercharged. So she attacks an enemy, it charges up her shot, and before she fires off that charge shot, she's gonna be shielded for 20%. While she's under her shield, enemies will have to deal the equivalent of 4,200 damage to take her out instead of her normal 3,360 health. Carl's Heat Ejector Gadget is getting a small rework. It's now going to set targets who touch the trail on fire. It will take 300 damage per second for four seconds, and this comes to one 1,200 total damage, which isn't a ton, but I do think that this will be a lot more useful than before. Now, the fire does not stack, but coming in contact with the fire a second time after the four seconds are up will reset the fire. Tick's attack is getting a slight rework. The mines that he sends out are going to be either more or less spread out depending on how far away he throws them. If he throws them really close to him, they will actually be closer together than before, but if he throws them really far away, they will be more spread out than normal. This will give Tick more control when he's attacking from a far away distance, but it'll be a lot less likely that enemies will run into all three mines, so he'll be dealing less damage. Tick's backup mine gadget is being replaced with his new Mine Mania gadget. When Tick activates this gadget, his next attack will throw out three additional mines for a potential total damage of 5,712 if someone happens to be unfortunate enough to get hit by all six mines. That's enough for Tick to one shot 35 out of the 45 brawlers in the game. Now, if Tick attacks close to him, the mines will create a small circle. But if Tick attacks further away, the mines will create a large circle. Barley's extra noxious star power is getting a 43% buff to its additional damage. It's going from 140 additional damage for every attack to an additional 200 damage for each attack. Next, we have Bo, who's getting an 8% buff to his attack damage. At max level, his attack damage is increasing from 728 to 784 damage per arrow. This means that Bo will be able to take out 10 of the brawlers in the game with one less ammo. And most significantly, he will now be able to take out 8-Bit and Pam with only 3 ammo. Brock's attack damage is getting an 8% buff as well. At max level, his damage is increasing from 1,456 to 1,568 damage. He'll now be able to take out 12 of the 45 brawlers in the game with one less ammo. And most significantly, he'll now be able to 3-shot brawlers with 4,480 health or less, much like Amber, Jesse, or Leon. He'll also now be able to 2-shot Tick as well. Carl's protective pirouette is getting a buff to the amount of damage that it shields while Carl is using his super. It's going from a 30% damage reduction to 35% damage reduction. This means that enemies will have to deal the equivalent of 9,477 damage if they want to take Carl out while this star power is activated. Crow is getting a buff to both of his star powers. For extra toxic, the amount of reduced damage that poisoned enemies will deal is going from 20% reduced damage to 25% reduced damage. For Carry and Crow, the additional damage that Crow deals against low health targets is increasing from 120 to 152 additional damage. Gale's super is getting a 140% damage 
buff. That sounds like a lot, but it pretty much just means that his damage from his super is growing from 140 damage to 336 damage. Gene is getting a 12.5% health buff. At max level, he's going from 4,480 to 5,040 health. This means that he's going to survive one additional ammo from 11 of the 45 brawlers in the game. Lou is getting three decent buffs. First of all is a 3% health buff. He's going from 4,340 to 4,480 health at max level, which is only enough to change a couple of small interactions, but his super is now going to deal 56 damage per second. Beforehand, it didn't deal any damage to anybody within its radius. And this is not a lot of damage, but it is enough to prevent enemies from healing, which is why this is actually a really good buff to Lou, at least in my opinion. Additionally, Lou's hypothermia star power is getting a buff. The maximum reload speed debuff that enemies will get depending on how cold they are is increasing from 35% reload speed debuff to a 50% reduction in their reload speed. Next is Amber, who is getting a 10% damage nerf to her attack. Each tick of damage is decreasing from 308 to 280. In other words, her DPS is decreasing from 3080 damage per second down to 2800 damage per second. However, the damage from her super is getting a 7% buff. It's going from 2500 520 total damage to 2,688 total damage. Overall, I think Amber will be a little bit less strong than before these changes. Next is Edgar, who is getting a 7% nerf to his health. At max level, his health is decreasing from 4,480 to 3,920. This means that he will die to 12 brawlers with one less ammo, which is actually fairly significant. Next, we have both Jesse and Mr. P, who are getting the exact same 6% health nerf. They are both going from 4,480 total health to 4,200 health. This means that both Jesse and Mr. P are going to get taken out with one less ammo from eight brawlers in the game. And that is everything that I am going to show you in this sneak peek. And we still have a lot to cover. There are skins, pins, and of course, all of the details of Power League that Supercell is making me wait before I can reveal to you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And just subscribe anyway. I, I create good content. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want to see some more, I've got some more videos over here. There's the subscribe button like I mentioned. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars. Watch out!